Hi, uh, Jonathan York from Bay Financial Partners, uh, looking at the investment markets. Um, really sort of quite interesting situation now facing the Fed after the latest day employment data coming out of the US. Latest uh, jobs data, they're expecting around 160,000 jobs to be created actually came in at 225. Um, that's obviously quite a uh, large improvement and really shows that the US economy is still pushing along at a pretty good rate. Now obviously the issue for the Fed is that uh, you know the start of the year um, with potential sort of trade tariffs and trade war uh, versus China and potentially Europe as well, um, the US economy was seen to be slowing a little bit and that was certainly evidenced in the uh, um, recent uh, jobs data as well which was you know really was sort of pretty benign. But now if you look at it, uh, you know, the US and China are talking again, potentially a deal is sort of reasonably close. Um, the latest round of uh, tariffs have been, uh, been put on hold. The US economy is now pushing along at uh, certainly a, a lot stronger rate. Um, and that does pose a little bit of an issue for the Fed. Because many analysts were predicting a, a rate cut at the uh, July meeting um, and then a further rate cut toward the uh, end of the year. When you throw into the mix as well, the uh, reporting season coming up as well, uh, probably going to be more important to see guidance. Uh, you know, certainly uh, earnings are probably going to be down a little bit. Uh, there's certainly been quite a bit of uh, downward revision. But I say probably a lot of that was sort of backward looking and really a result of sort of the, you know, the ongoing trade tensions that were taking place. So potentially quite an interesting time in the next sort of three to four months just to see what the Fed does do. Um, obviously, I suppose the next sort of round of uh, employment data will be pretty interesting to see if that is uh, maintained on a pretty strong sort of growth uh, pattern. You know, if it is, then it really does pose some issues for the Fed. You know, because potentially the rate cuts are then on hold, and uh, you know, the, the recent rally, which has been sort of buoyed by uh, the fact that the Fed would come to the, uh, the rescue and the sort of lower interest rates, probably won't happen. But if you look at the core fundamentals for the US economy, you know, it's in pretty good shape. And the most important thing as well from the Fed's perspective maybe is that inflation is still very low. Couple of interesting points uh, from Mr. Trump as well. He's sort of uh, waging a bit of a war currently with the UK, which supposedly he has a special relationship with. Um, but obviously, the uh, the UK ambassador to Washington has uh, um, come out, and uh, there were some leaked uh, emails and correspondence that were less than uh, favourable towards the US presidency. And uh, you know, he's come out and sort of all guns blazing, really, and pretty criticising left, right, and centre. The other interesting comment was uh, the fact that uh, you know he's, he's not very happy with India imposing tariffs on U.S. goods.
slightly hypocritical because, you know, Trump is sort of imposing tariffs on any countries that he feels has an unfair trade advantage. Oil spiked back a little bit from the sort of low uh, 50s um, and really sort of stuck in that range, sort of really sort of 55 to 60 really, and just trying to get a handle on where it's going. Obviously, you've still got the uh, uh, sort of ongoing unrest in the Middle East. Um, Iran is still uh, you know, posing some issues in terms of their nuclear program and sort of breaching their limits. And it's just going to be very interesting to see how that does sort of play through. But again, in a sort of strange, ironical twist, that obviously as oil goes higher, it does benefit the US with the shale producers. Getting down to the last rounds now in the UK uh, election for uh, the new leader of the Conservative Party and then obviously the new Prime Minister. Um, it's just going to be very interesting to see if Boris Johnson can take that out. Certainly he's faced a few headwinds um, and really hasn't come across in the press uh, particularly well. But as discussed here before, you know, just because they get a new leader, a new prime minister, you've still got the same issues with Brexit. And it's hard to see how they're going to be uh, resolved or dissolved, if you like, just by a new leader taking place. Here in New Zealand, uh, still a little bit of uh, sort of lack of confidence in the business sector, if you like. Um, you know, certainly uh, readings are sort of uh, pretty, pretty much on the low side. Uh, they should be buoyed by the fact that, you know, the Reserve Bank has cut interest rates and sort of low interest rate environment should be beneficial for businesses and, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the economy going forward. You know, obviously what it does do, it does underpin the, the housing market. But I'd say obviously the flip side, you know, with cheaper borrowing, there's also cheaper deposit rates as well. You know, that's backed up uh, in the sort of bond issuance. Um, Trust Bear have a bond in the marketplace at the present uh, seven years. Uh, the rate hasn't been set yet, but the minimum rate will be 3.35 fixed for the next seven years. Now, if you're interested in that, uh, call us on 0800 867 323. Also, as well, uh, quite a bit of interest out there in the Port of Napier uh, IPO. Again, if you're interested in that, call us on 0800 867 323 or go to the website www.bayfinancialpartners.co.nz. You know, if you are looking for income options, you know, there are quite a few alternatives available out there giving a reasonable return um, when compared with the sort of bond and uh, uh, bank uh, TD rates. And if you're interested in discussing what is available, call us on 0800 867 323 or go to the website www.bayfinancialpartners.co.nz for lots of interesting articles and we we'll look forward to speaking to you soon.